This factory in Pennsylvania is making Ukraine's most important ammunition. 155 millimeter rounds are basically giant bullets used in artillery guns. The Scranton Army Ammunition Plant has been making steel shells since 1953. And today, demand is so high that it's making 11,000 of them every month. Ukraine may be firing more than half of that each day. So, there's a global shortage. Some experts are concerned that the U.S. is burning through its own supply. So why is this particular artillery ammo so important in Ukraine? And how is the U.S. arming them during the shortage? At the start of the war, air power was expected to be the key to a Russian victory. They outnumbered Ukraine in military aircrafts 10 to 1. But Ukraine found ways to shoot down Russia's warplanes and defend against its missile attacks. Putin pivoted to massive artillery strikes. The problem was most of Ukraine's artillery weapons dated back to the Soviet era. They required ammunition produced mostly by Russia and its supporters, China and North Korea. So Ukraine called on the US and its NATO allies for aid. The US alone sent Ukraine about 200 artillery guns that required ammo they already had in stock, 155 millimeter rounds. Now, they're one of Ukraine's most critical weapons. 155s are the perfect balance between power and weight. They're shot from howitzers, which are basically a cannon and mortar combined. These massive guns fire shells high up into the air so that they drop down onto their targets. 155 millimeter rounds are small enough to fire up to 20 miles, but still do serious damage. They're packed with 24 pounds of TNT and explode on impact, sending deadly shrapnel in all directions. They're also less expensive than fancier weapons. Javelin anti-tank missiles can cost as much as $78,000, and these shells sell for as little as $800. The Scranton Army Ammunition Plant builds the steel shells for the U.S.'s most basic 155mm round, the M795. The U.S. is producing 24,000 a month, almost double what it was making before Russia invaded Ukraine. And nearly half of that supply comes from this factory. Everything starts in the billet yard. Workers move steel rods to the next phase, the forge shop. Four robotic saws slice the rods into 14-inch long chunks called billets. Efficiency is key to speed. Then they heat them for an hour at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This softens them up so they're easy to shape. You couldn't possibly forge a billet at room temperature. We're basically turning the steel into Play-Doh. Then machines stretch and shape the billets into their final form. Another one adds a nose, which makes it aerodynamic. It comes into the press, it's still a tube. As it leaves the press, it's now a projectile. They're inspected and then fed to the production shop. Then the grand finale. Workers reheat the billets, then cool them in a 6,000 gallon oil bath. After some final lathing and polishing, workers hang the shells on hooks. Then they get a fresh paint job. The entire process takes about three days. After the shells are done, they take a truck ride to another factory that adds TNT. Then they're ready for the battlefield. It's there that soldiers will add the fuse and turn it into a lethal bomb. 155s have been used by the US and its allies since World War I. They were small enough to hit targets up to seven miles away but packed enough power to penetrate enemy trenches. United Nations guns go into action against red position. After World War II, 155 mm became the standard artillery size for NATO countries. Today, the U.S. has rounds equipped with GPS guidance systems that cost over $100,000 per shell. Since the war began, all the NATO allies have sent Ukraine some form of military aid. They've donated tanks, 
anti-aircraft guns, rocket launchers, and missile defense systems. But the U.S. tops the list. They've sent roughly $42 billion worth of weapons to Ukraine. While expensive weapons like these make headlines, it's artillery that Ukraine is using more than anything. This past spring, Ukrainian forces were firing up to 8,000 155mm shells a day. According to a June report, Germany sent Ukraine so many shells that it had about 20,000 left in its stockpile. That's enough only for a few days of intensive combat. Critics are worried the same thing could happen to the United States. What we need most of all is artillery shells. And uh, they're in short supply, we're working on that. The U.S. has sent more than 2 million 155 millimeter rounds to Ukraine. But most of that came from its own stockpile, which it uses to train soldiers and aid other allies. While the true status of the nation's stockpile is a closely guarded secret, some experts are concerned that it could be running low. The scale of Ukrainian need versus American capacity to build are very different. The U.S. has already borrowed half a million 155 millimeter shells from South Korea to help resupply its own stockpile. It's also turned to Japan for more TNT. We've hit the level at which the Pentagon planners are uncomfortable going any lower because of the demands for other war plans. The Army has spent billions updating its factories to make more 155s. They want to make 85,000 shells per month by 2028, over three times the current output. But it could still take years to refill the stockpile. You need to hire people. You need more of the steel to build the shells. You need to uh, have a larger factory space. You have to follow all of the safety uh, requirements because each of these has to meet a military uh, specification for usage and have to go through the inspection process. In July 2023, the U.S. announced its decision to send Ukraine a controversial type of 155, equipped with cluster bombs. Russia has also used them. Each shell contains 88 small explosives, or bomblets, that are released in midair. They can cover an area up to seven acres and destroy everything from trenches to tanks. But these rounds are banned in over 120 countries because the bomblets sometimes fail to explode on impact and harm civilians who find them later on. 94% of recorded cluster bomb deaths are civilians, and almost 40% of those are children. The U.S. has already sent thousands to Ukraine in its latest $800 million military aid package in July. President Biden has said that the cluster bombs are only a temporary solution. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky said a lack of ammunition is what's keeping his military from reclaiming Russian-occupied territory more quickly. But the U.S. Army says its goals for increasing its 155 output are on pace. That's good for Ukraine, as it could be the difference in taking back their country. In June, they launched a counteroffensive against Russian troops they tried to break Russian defenses with heavy tanks at first, but switched their strategy to artillery fire. It's been moving slowly. So they'll need plenty of shells for the long haul. Oh, 